are a bunch of kids and you received a scholarship to come to California, come to Southern California to study with me at the Barboza Space Center and we are associated to the Columbia Memorial Space Center. So all of the great artifacts that we use to go to the moon, I have in a warehouse. So you can go through the warehouse and poke around. You're gonna have a good time coming to California. So I got a laser pointer here, let's test it out. Good, everything's working. All right, so here it is. You're coming to California, you're a bunch of kids, I have to train you to be a junior astronaut, a junior engineer, and a junior scientist because I'm taking you to Mars. So, you get a nice little uniform, I get a nice little uniform, and this means that every time I visit a donut shop, I get free donuts because I'm dressed like that. That's the nicest part of my whole job. This summer, students from USC visited me at the Columbia Memorial Space Center and we set up the Space Center as it was mission control and we were contacting Mars from the Space Center. That's what we want to do with you. We would like some of you in the audience to make a contribution from a distance so we could rebroadcast your thoughts, your work, to about 81,000 students in the Long Beach Unified School District. Wouldn't that be cool? So, if you want to be an astronaut and go to Mars, there's still a requirement for you to be a jet pilot. So you have to go somewhere and get that kind of jet pilot training, or you can train with me flying drones. Same thing. <laughs> So, as a junior astronaut, junior engineer, junior scientist, we're gonna work with a flight simulator and give you a little bit of an experience so you could be that jet pilot. The Super School Design Center is going to be a place for the designers and artists out there and architects that want to design the futuristic machines, habitats, and all those kinds of things. We got a lot of our inspiration from Mrs. Jobs and the XQ Super School project. She was willing to give $10 million to five people, or five groups of people, because that was part of the rethinking of the American high school. So we put our hat in the ring and our whole entire team competed. So when we competed, we had to work with the next generation science standards. This is a formula that America is following with their schools. And this is how it plays out. So if you were back in school right now, this is how we're thinking about teaching you the sciences. So the Barbosa Space Center is that magic place where it all comes together and our project is called the Occupy Mars Learning Adventures. In the background, we're integrating science, technology, engineering, visual and performing arts, mathematics, computer languages, and foreign languages because we're working at an international level. You will have the opportunity to major in one of these areas, or you could pick all of these areas to work in. When we take you on board, we take you on board as an intern. So don't think of it as going to school, think of it as a job. So you get to practice the aerospace industry as, as a youngster. When you're through with your training, we're hoping that you would have all of these skills and be able to communicate in the world of aerospace. A lot of our schools are working on the Common Core State Standards and you'll be working on things like this to build up your communication skills. You get to present on Kids Talk Radio. 
Kids Talk Radio Science is the new channel. And if you have a contribution to make, you could actually make a contribution as an adult and be on Kids Talk Radio. Kids Talk Radio has the following station. So if you were to go to Google and look up Kids Talk Radio, you could find a channel representing all of these different countries. We have Kids Talk Radio Russia, and the students in Russia sent a real cute video. They knew they were working with the Americans, so they put together a special video in their school and sent it to us. We were really surprised. So there's our college team. In our high school team, these, these are students that are uh, very interested in becoming engineers and they're on their way to USC School of Engineering. These are our students from a country called Cabo Verde. That is one of our partner countries and it's off the west coast of Africa. It's a place where hurricanes are born. We love this country because they have one of the world's uninhabited islands, Santa Lucia, and to us, that's Mars. So we practice some of our Mars skills, Santa Lucia and Cape Verde. We have another partner in Rhode Island. This is a Central Falls High School in Rhode Island, and we visited there. These are our kids' talk radio reporters that report the news. If you were to come to California and work with me, you would all get an astronaut outfit because this is what you wear to school. <laughs> and if you are musically inclined, you would be members of the Occupy Mars Band, and that band should have been playing at this convention. You should see these guys. And if you're a musician, we'd invite you to be a, a guest soloist with the Occupy Mars Band little something you could put on your resume. This young lady plays a bass didgeridoo. So when we, one of you could, could stand up here and tell a Mars story, and in the background would be the Occupy Mars Band. So think about that for next year. The Occupy Mars Band on that stage, one of you being a guest so soloist while you're the narrator and they play the music and sound effects behind what you're saying. So that's the kind of stuff we're gonna do if we don't go to Mars. We'll be doing a lot of this kind of stuff. So that's what you would look like in the Occupy Mars band. Now many of you have been members of this organization for a long time, but you've never had your own Occupy Mars band. So when you see Dr. Zubin out there, you tell him, next year we want the Occupy Mars band flown out here because we're gonna perform live. So to get kids inspired, sometimes we'll partner with a youth orchestra and we, we write Martian stories. There's a woman right here today, her name is Barbara Davis, and she wrote one of our first Occupy Mars stories, and uh, we set that to music and sound effects. It's kind of like War of the Worlds. There's nothing more prestigious than when the Occupy Mars Band gets to work with the United States Army, and we worked together and we did a project together. So. These are our space instruments. And these are special instruments to create all of the sound effects that you would need. We wrote our own original music, so this music's not like your regular music you're used to uh, working because you've got to run a lot of electrical instruments at the same time. So this is great Martian training. These are other electronic instruments that help us create all kinds of sounds. And then uh, a uh, professor from Rhode Island actually wrote a book on the jazz of physics. So when we really get into it, you get a costume, so you never have to be embarrassed playing with the Occupy Mars Band because they won't be able to tell who you are <laughs> till you take off that costume.
So we played for the blind veterans at the VA hospital and we turned about 15 blind veterans into Occupy Mars band performers. It was one of, probably one of the most wonderful things I've ever done is to volunteer to train that orchestra. We're doing a lot of work with humanoid robots as we train kids to work with Valkyrie level robots that would actually go to Mars. So we ended up designing a lot of software so we can do lots of simulations as we work with these robots. Every December, a friend of ours called Doug Stoop, he's a National Geographic Explorer, he goes to Antarctica, and this year he's going to take an experiment from our group to Antarctica as we simulate all of this Mars stuff. So this is an example. So if any of you have some experiments that you would like to send to Antarctica, let me know. We're going to be working with, of course, a lot of augmented reality as we try to do all these simulations. So we do a lot of work. Here's an example of some of the projects that the kids are uh, putting together in the satellite program. Each year we, we pick a theme for our kids and the theme this year is NASA and NOAA needs your help. So I come to conferences like this and find out what all the problems are, then I go back and I tell the kids, NASA needs your help, this is what they're working on. We live very close to SpaceX. One of the thrills of my life was taking the tour of SpaceX. Absolute thrill to walk down the hallway and say, oh my God. I, I walked in a room, I saw three rockets in a row. And all kinds of people working in the coolest environment. But if you want to be an intern at SpaceX, 500 people apply they're only going to keep 50. And when you're in that interview room, they're going to pull out a chart that looks just like this as they're interviewing you to work at SpaceX. We're doing a lot of work with our kids with space mathematics. These are some of the tools. We're letting our kids know in our simulation rooms how to work under stress. So I will be putting together the special stress lab for the kids and they'll be in there working on electrical engineering projects. We had a chance to practice being on Mars by climbing all the way down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. What a mistake that was. <laughs> Oh my God, I'll never suggest that or try that again. When I got to the bottom of that Grand Canyon, I said, oh my God, the only thing worse will be in two days we're going back up. Now think of that special valley on Mars, three times as deep as the Grand Canyon. Oh my God. But. When I was walking to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and I was looking on the side and I saw the geological work that was on the side of the Grand Canyon and I said, that's what they want to do in Mars. That's why they want to go down there because the geological history was out of this world as I was going down our own Grand Canyon. My only suggestion is when you go to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, you're coming back, don't look up. Don't look up with the hope, when am I going to get there? Oftentimes, we have to recruit people from the general public. And sometimes I need examples of small, medium, and large. My hero was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. When I got to meet him and he came, if you turn around and look at that exit sign back there, could you imagine someone having to duck down to come through that door? No one loves science more than that man, that great basketball player. He loves science and knows quite a bit. 
We have a team of geologists that have worked with us and we took them on different missions. This year we will put together Occupy Mars TV so you can see us and see the work we're doing and maybe we can see the work that you're suggesting. So in the area of podcasting, this is what we're doing. Who knows what this is? The first seed to actually bloom and create a flower aboard the International Space Station. This is what I dream about, the dream machine. Everybody wants a special car, or they have their favorite car or vehicle. This is my favorite car or vehicle. We're doing lots of simulations with that. Here's a way of training our jet pilots. Using a drone and using Facebook. Think of it, Facebook and flying a drone. There is a connection. I was in Long Beach. The driver of the drone was in Atlanta, Georgia. We used Facebook to fly that drone. That would be another whole lecture. And there he is. This is the editor of STEM magazine, by the way. These are some of the satellite kits that our kids are building as we simulate going to Mars and everything Mars. In my living room, I use a special device called ISS Above. I get to see aboard the International Space Station from my living room every day. Beautiful little device, generated by the use of a Raspberry Pi. Who knows what a Raspberry Pi computer is? Okay, very good, okay. So when I wake up in the morning and I turn on my television set, I get to see who's aboard the International Space Station. And every 30 days, like these three on the bottom, will rotate out. And then three more will come on. They'll usually keep one commander aboard each time as they rotate out. And then when I go to bed at night, I can't leave this on because sometimes it'll, they'll come on the air and it, they'll blast at full volume. So I make sure that I turn it off every night. Each crew, get, each time a crew goes up, they get a little crew patch. And then one day when they were installing this in my house, they said, hey, come on outside. Come on outside, look up, look up. The International Space Station was flying over my house because I have a little device that lets me know when it flies over my house or when it flies over your house. Okay, wrong button here. Oh, there we go. So, that's an example. As soon as it flies over my house, a little device starts going crazy, and I can see when it's going to come, when all of those little circles get close to that plus sign in the middle there, the device starts blinking like crazy. As we move on, we're talking to our students about nanocrafts and the excitement of this business of going out into deep space. So our students are working on things like this by coming up with their designs for nanocrafts. So we're doing a lot of design work. Then there's the hyperloops. So we're imagining, we've been on Mars for a long time, things are moving along beautifully, what would be our transportation system? So our kids are working on stuff like that. How many of you are familiar with hyperloops in general? Okay, the word's getting out. So this is that whole Hyperloop thing. So we said to our kids, what would happen if we built our own international space station above the planet Mars? So of course, people are coming up with ideas. So kids have great imaginations. 
Then we said, what about if we started designing our own satellite systems that could do all kinds of jobs as we work our way to Mars? What would happen if we designed our own astronaut software to keep track of all of this? So you could see if you were kids working with me, you probably would be having a good time, especially you kids <laughs> who are into Mars big time. So these are the kinds of projects you'd be doing as a student. This kid is in the fifth grade. He's the youngest kid we ever worked with, and he designed his own Martian video that just blew our minds. You know, a fifth grade, he put it together on his own. We're doing a lot of work with Mars rovers, and these are all of the different styles and combinations we've been coming up with different satellite configurations as we try to simulate everything. This was very, very clever. If there was a cricket in here right now and the cricket was chirping, I'd say to you, hey, where's the cricket? You'd point over there. Then I'd come to him, hey, where's the cricket? He's pointing over there. Hey, where's the cricket? You're pointing in the back. Well, we can't be scientists doing that kind of stuff. So what we did is we created this cricket detector. We find the cricket every time 100%. This came out of the Kids Mars Project. Everybody needs a cricket detector. So we are now building robots with the, the, our connection to the International Space Station. And now I get a chance to use my pointer. All right. You see this device right here? If you come to visit me at my house and you see that blinking like crazy, we run outside and we watch the International Space Station come right over the top of my house. Now, how cool is that? Oftentimes, I'll work with you on simulated satellites. And these are the projects that are underway right now. A lot of cool projects. Remember I talked to you about that uninhabited island? I had a chance to speak in this country of Cabo Verde. And where is that uninhabited island? Santa Lucia, right there. That is Mars to me. This island over here, Fogo, four months ago I was on that island. That island has an active volcano. Our hope and dream is to be able to take a bunch of kids to the island of Fogo as we study the uninhabited island of Santa Lucia, and there it is. Are any of you old enough to remember the voyage of the Mimi? Did you ever hear that term, the voyage of the Mimi? The actor Ben Affleck, when he was a little kid, used to go aboard a ship like this, and he would sail during the summer, and that would be his school. I always dreamed of going to school like this, but of course, we're the crazy Mars people, so we'll go to school in a little different way. So that country of Cabo Verde looks like this. And this is our Jurassic Park team. I see my five minute warning, okay. So now I'm gonna hit this button. This is where I'm taking a bunch of kids to see and work with those active volcanoes. I gave a talk in the country. They put me up in this fabulous hotel. I did not wanna come home because I was overlooking this pool and the Atlantic Ocean. So now I'm just going to let a picture be a thousand words. So we're studying volcanoes from a distance. This is the country where hurricanes are born. So we're going to do our Mars simulations. We're going to study what's going on, mapping underneath the ocean, and do everything that we can to simulate research and development 
So by studying the active volcanoes on Earth, also be studying the volcanoes on Mars. Okay, I'm gonna just move along here quickly. So I had fun studying these volcanoes. So we were comparing and contrasting the volcanoes on Earth and the volcanoes on Mars. This is a little over-exaggeration, but you get the point. So there's my Grand Canyon crew. Then we got into the Martian habitats. I'm going to do a presentation on a panel, an education panel, and I'm going to show the work that we're doing with Martian habitats. We probably will be most famous for the work on Martian habitats. I brought with me special habitats that were made by a laser printer. When people ask me, what are you doing with this Mars program and how can that help us on Earth? I'm saying some of the habitats we're building for Mars can be used for the homeless people on Earth. So this is teacher training. Uh, we, and when you live in California, there's cave kayaking. So we're studying the caves on Earth as we think about the caves on Mars. Boy, the slides come out really good in this room. This is a great projector, great equipment. When I first met the president of the Mars Society, Robert Zubin, we were talking about this location as being a second location. This is some land that we have in the Arizona desert, and to us, this is Mars. So we're thinking of a second location, and we're scouting it out right now, where some of you will come out and visit us in California as we explore Arizona's take on Mars. So if you're a geologist, this is a geologist's dream because this is located very close to Quartzsite, California, the gem capital of the world. So if we end up doing this, we will be taking these Martian kits and I'm going to end here because my time must be just about up. If you have an experiment to go aboard the International Space Station and you're connected with kids, we have an opportunity to do this. So we're looking to work with some people that are working with some kids that have an experiment that you would like to conduct aboard the International Space Station. If that is the case, I, at the end, I'll be standing over there in the corner and I have some special brochures so you can be in contact with me, with the blogs, with the websites. So with that, I'm asking, are there any questions? My timing okay? Okay. See, I'm a musician. I'm on top of that timing. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Okay. Nobody's going to debunk any of my theories here. And, okay. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> I want to thank you for the setup and everything worked, the laser pointer, everything. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.